Hi there, my name is Neil Blevins and this tutorial is called Foreground, Midground, and Background. So when making 2D or 3D environments, or a figure in an environment, having a solid foreground, midground, and background is key to leading the eye through the frame and to the focal point of the piece. So this tutorial discusses a little bit about the different ways to go about lighting these environments from a high-level compositional perspective. Most lighting schemes can be broken down into a few different types, and choosing the right type can really change the feel of an image. So first off, if you haven't seen it yet, check out my Layers of Light and Dark tutorial, uh, which I posted on YouTube a couple weeks ago. And this tutorial discusses how to use light and dark to create depth, to lead the eye, and to keep uh, different layers separate from each other. And in this tutorial, I'm going to focus on the different types of lighting scenarios most commonly used. For the purpose of this tutorial, let's assume that the focal point, or the subject of your piece, uh, is always in the midground. So here's the most three common types that I've noticed. There is the dark foreground, light midground, and lightest background. There's the dark foreground, light mid, and then dark background. And then the dark foreground, dark midground, and light background. So let's start with the most common one, which is the dark foreground, light midground, and lightest background. So in this one, um, as the name says, the closest stuff to the camera is dark, like this hill here. Um, in fact, it can possibly just be a silhouette, it's so dark. Stuff in the midground is light and contains your subject, and then the stuff in the background is the lightest. And here is an example of this uh, in an actual photograph. So this is a photograph of Yosemite, and you can see that the uh, foreground here is dark, and then it goes to a, a mid value in the middle ground where uh, Half Dome is, and then it's lightest way off in the distance. So a few notes about this lighting scheme. First of all, um, the main reason that this is the most common is because it kind of mimics most outdoor lighting situations, where things get lighter in the distance due to atmospheric haze. So, you know, we think of air as being clear, and it's mostly clear, but there's a little bit of opacity to it, and the more of it you look through, uh, as in the further you look, the more that opacity takes over. And that's what causes uh, things to look lighter when it's off in the distance because of uh, the fog or the atmospheric haze. So another note is that the uh, dark foreground elements here are, are sort of a platform for the viewer. So the viewer will imagine themselves as being part of the black foreground area, and they're looking out to the lit landscape, almost like they're in a dark movie theater looking to the screen. Or another way you could kind of interpret this dark uh, foreground is that the dark objects close to camera is sort of like a picture frame to your painting. In fact, placing these dark objects close to camera, especially if there's a figure in the midground, is sometimes referred to as framing the character. And uh, another thing just to note, um, when you're doing the stuff that's dark really close to the camera, sometimes it's cool to blur it a bit, as though they're so close so that they're slightly out of focus, which again helps lead the eye to the subject that's in the midground. And then uh, when you're doing uh, the, the far distance stuff, one thing to keep in mind is try to avoid just one level. Like avoid it, it being just the dark foreground, one value of mid, and then one value of light. Instead, try to have like four or five different uh, levels of light in the background. So you have like a mountain, and then a mountain behind a mountain, and a mountain behind a mountain, and each one is getting lighter the further that it goes. And then lastly, just to point out, if you don't want to place actual dark objects close to camera, you can use the technique of a vignette, which involves softly darkening the edge of the canvas to create that frame that I mentioned before. Uh, or you can use a subtle vignette and a foreground element together. So you can see here, um, this one is similar to the other images, but doesn't have the um, dark mountain here. And then this one here has that vignette, which kind of replaces that darkness that uh, you'd expect around the edges. So now let's look at some actual concept art. So this one is uh, pretty straightforward. It has exactly three levels. You have the dark foreground elements, which are here and here. And then you have the midground, which is these rocks, uh, specky rocks pointing here. And then you have the light background. And then here's another one. So notice the dark silhouette of these uh, rocks up in the foreground. And then the midground is this tower to the left, which you can um, see more clearly uh, with some light. And then the lightest stuff is in the background here. 
And uh, the foreground and background elements here add depth without taking focus away from the object in the midground, because the stuff that's really close to camera here is so dark that you can't see any detail, and the stuff that's furthest from the camera is um, so fogged that you can't see any detail. So really the detail is in that midground area here, and that helps focus the eye. And then, just to point out, it also works on the inside as well, not just outdoor environments. So if you have this big cavernous space, you can see here, there's the dark foreground elements. Uh, then you have the midground here, um, which uh, leads the eye over to this contrasty area. And then, while it's not as big as the light areas in the other images, you can see that the further area here is lighter than this area here. So it's exactly the same thing, it's just indoors. And the one final one, um, so dark foreground, including our little small human figure here, and then the light midground, which is the giant robot looking down at our, our figure, and then the light background. So let's move on to the dark foreground, light midground, and dark background. So for this type, imagine a spotlight uh, illuminating the middle ground. And a couple notes about this lighting scheme. Uh, first of all, it feels very dramatic and theatric. And that's because this is very similar to what you get in a stage play, where the audience is in the foreground, which is dark. Uh, and then the rear of the stage is also kind of dark. And then the actors are in the midground, and they're illuminated with a single spotlight. And um, this is also really good for situations like jungles or forests, since light uh, creates these patches of illumination between the uh, canopy of the trees. And it's also good for, you know, the broken down post-apocalyptic building where big holes in the uh, buildings reveal shafts of light coming through. And then finally, it's also great for stormy skies. So here's some concept art examples. And uh, this one here, you see, doesn't actually have any foreground elements, but I'm using that vignette that I mentioned earlier to kind of make this front area darker. And then in the midground, you have the spotlight, which is illuminating this robot here. And then behind it, over here, it is darker than this midground. And then here is a um, still image from The Incredibles by Pixar. And you can see here that the plants in the foreground are very dark. And this tree in the background is also kind of dark. And then you have this spotlight effect that's hitting um, our two heroes here who are just waking up in the forest. And this is also a good example of how the background doesn't have to be as dark as the foreground to make this work. It can be kind of a, uh, a mid-level dark, as long as it's darker than the stuff that's in the middle ground. And then here's a real forest example. And you can see here, so dark foreground, uh, darkish background back here, and then these pools of light where the sunlight is coming through the trees. So if we wanted to place a, a character in here, uh, one good spot would be to place them in this pool of light. So they're getting the light, which gives them a focus, and with the dark here and here to sort of frame them. And then finally, the stormy sky um, example. So you have here um, sort of a darkish foreground, kind of a darkish background, and then you have these pools of light uh, in the sky and then also um, reflecting in the water here. So now the third type is the dark foreground, dark midground, and light background. And this is almost like the first type because you have atmospheric perspective. It's lighter in the background and darker in the foreground. Um, except in this one, the midground is also dark. And a few notes about this lighting scheme. Uh, first of all, it's the highest contrast because the subject matter that you're looking at um, is uh, far darker than the background right beside it. Um, second of all, it really silhouettes the focal point against that background. Um, so it's really good for seeing what the shape of the thing is that's in that midground, even though you're not seeing as many details on it. Um, sometimes this is referred to as a backlit environment because uh, you have the light coming from the back uh, of the main subject. And this is really great for creating mystery, since you can't quite make out the details at your focal point. So now concept art examples. Uh, this is from the Story of Ink book. And here you have the dark foreground of Ink the robot. And then in the midground, you have this dark giant robot figure. And then it is really uh, much darker than the light background uh, uh, behind it here. And this uh, creates that mystery I was talking about, where you see this giant robot, you can't see all the details on it, and you're kind of like, he looks like he's pretty dangerous, but you don't quite know if he's a good guy or a bad guy. 
And this is some um, an image that I painted for Disintegration, the video game. I did some concept for, for that game. And the, the brief on this is it's supposed to be this foggy town with these sort of uh, probes floating around looking for you to uh, take you out. So um, again, uh, the dark foreground and then the kind of darkish midground to create that mystery and then the light background. So you can see these kind of scary shapes floating around. Uh, another example here, so dark foreground and then dark uh, focal point, which is this uh, machine sort of thing, and then the light background. And another example, this one doesn't have foreground elements, but it does have the foreground dark vignette. And then the figures themselves are also dark, these sort of robot heads, and then the light background. So as a final note, as well as depth, you can also use uh, bright and dark on the top or bottom of your frame. In fact, many images combine these two. So for this image here in Yosemite, you have the, the dark foreground, the light midground, and the lightest background, but you also have dark at the bottom and light on top. And this is a very normal way to place your light and dark, since with most landscapes, the sky is usually the brightest thing, and the land is usually the darkest thing, and the land is always below the sky, and so the dark bottom, light top tends to feel more natural. But you can, of course, invert that, and you have a really dark top with a light bottom. And this gives you a more uneasy feeling, like you're in this cave, and things being, you know, things are being lit from underneath, and there's this big oppressive thing hovering over you, ready to kind of crush you. And another example of that feeling, of course, is uh, this is a still from Independence Day, where you have this big, dark, foreboding flying saucer over the, uh, the, the light city. So, of course, these three types are just the beginning. Um, there are examples of other types, like bright foreground, medium, midground, and dark background. Uh, you could also use more than three distances, so you could have dark against light against dark against light against dark. And there's nothing wrong with any of these, but the three types that I mentioned here are generally the ones that I tend to see the most often. Um, you could also, you know, have an image that's just midground and background with no foreground. And while that's limiting the potential depth of the image, it certainly can be done in some instances. So if you want to get really good at analyzing these sorts of images, here's your final exam. So check out the website of Dylan Cole. He's a concept artist and map painter, and he's the current co-production designer of the Avatar sequels. And he's amazing at creating these sorts of images. So visit his Avatar portfolio, which you can see here, and try to categorize all of the images uh, that you can see based on the Type 1, Type 2, or Type 3 that I've shown in this tutorial. Now obviously some of these images are actually hybrids of multiple types, and some don't fall into any of the different categories but many, many of them will follow the basic rules of one of these three types. So go through and try to categorize them. So there we go. Uh, next time you need to light a scene or paint an environment painting, start by choosing one of these three types, decide why that particular type is the best for the type of image you're trying to make, and then use it. And uh, I bet by doing this little bit of planning ahead of time, it'll improve your final composition immensely. So thank you very much for watching. I hope you found it interesting. Um, please go to my website, neilblevins.com, and go to the Art Lessons section if you want to uh, see more tutorials. And uh, feel free to subscribe to my YouTube channel if you would like to be notified the next time I post a new video tutorial. Thank you very much.